time. It has a tendency to fly by fast. But what's gonna happen when our time is up? After 700 days of traveling through Indonesia, I had found a place where the journey to the afterlife is an essential part of their culture. I had made it to Toraja in South Sulawesi, a place where they see death as one soul moving to the realm of the spirit world. This culture has been passed down from their ancestors, from generation to generation, from buffalo fights to chicken fights. I wanted to learn and document all that Toraja has to offer, from afterlife to adventure. So let's get started from the very beginning of this incredible adventure. So lama pagi guys. I have now climbed Gunung Latimojong and it is time to continue towards Toraja. So everything is now packed. Time to say goodbye. Tada guys. See you yeah. Terima kasih. Tada. Today is gonna be a beautiful ride because we're gonna go back some of the same mountain roads as we did coming here and that was epic. Oh yeah. It was the perfect start of the day. Riding through the curved mountain roads as the sun was rising. Breathing in the fresh and cool air with my visor wide open. Right up until I reached the city because there a group of kids were having a very different start of the day. All three of them, at the age of 10, had been riding too fast, unable to maneuver the incoming car. With limited police in these small villages, it's not uncommon to ride without a helmet. So they got back on the bike, now four kids, on their way to the hospital. Ah, uh, so guys. This is what happens when kids, they ride motorcycles alone. Three kids on the same bike, no helmet, no flip-flops. So don't forget to wear a helmet and don't drive three people on a motorcycle. And don't drive if you don't have a license and you're underage. Uh, I know it's tough to say here in Indonesia because yeah, so, so many drive before they even have a license, but so it is. Guys, this is it. Selamat datang di Tanah Toraja. Wow, we can already see the traditional houses here. Oh, I think they're called like Tangongan or Tonggangan or something like that. Wow, so cool. Ha. Coming to Toraja has been a dream for a long time. Oh, I cannot wait to learn more about Toraja and the culture here. I haven't watched too many videos from Toraja because I don't really like watching YouTube videos about the places I'm going because then I already know so much about the places even before I arrive there and it kind of ruins the experience a little bit. I know a lot of YouTubers will watch other YouTubers to get inspiration but I really prefer just going to a place and then finding the inspiration there. Otherwise, we will also end up making exactly the same content, all us YouTubers. So, uh, yeah. Wow, guys, check this view. Green fields, mountains, blue sky. That is my uh, very excited, very high-pitched voice. I'll try to make it sound a little bit more manly when I edit this video, if possible. Still recovering from the hike, I checked in at the first hotel I could find and luckily they had one room left. But if you want to plan in advance, I recommend simply booking your stay via the Traveloka app. You can both choose free cancellation in case you need to cancel and you can choose flexible payment so that you can stay first and pay later. I had arrived in the city of Makale, the capital of Tanatoraja. You know you're in Makale 
when you see the iconic Lucky Padada statue, a monument to a brave man from Tanatoraja and a reminder of the importance of their culture. A giant Jesus statue watches over the city as the majority of the Torajan people are Christians. Roughly 40,000 people lives here in between the mountains. And at a first glance, it might look like any other city with traffic and various local street kitchens. But if you look closer, you will see a lively city that has embraced the importance of sports and exercise as the locals spend their afternoons either playing kick volleyball, known as Takrao, or running around the Lakipadada statue. A great place to meet new friends. Salamat pagi guys. So this morning I've come up to one of the mountain tops here in Toraja because this is in my opinion the best place to start this new video of Toraja. It's called Lolai above the clouds and we have this most incredible view over the blanket of clouds as the sun is rising. So I left my hotel at four o'clock this morning because it takes around 40 minutes to get here and I met with my tour guide Paru so now we're just enjoying the sunrise but I thought yeah let's start our Toraja adventure from this place as Paru and I left the misty mountains I was thinking about where to start because I wanted to learn as much as possible about Toraja and their traditions before I attended one of the famous funeral rituals. So we drove to a place called Karwaya to start with one of the first things that you will see upon arriving in Toraja. The traditional Torajan houses are called Tonkonans. It means sitting together in the Torajan language. These houses have been passed down through generations and are both used for living, for cultural and social events. In front of the Tonkonan, you will always see the opposing smaller structure called Alang. They are rice granaries. The Tonkonans are decorated with buffalo horns. These are both a sign of the wealth and status as one line shows how many buffaloes was sacrificed at just one funeral. A high-class funeral will have a minimum of 24 buffaloes sacrificed. I thought the Tonkonan shape was based on the buffalo's horns, but Pa'aru told me the real reason behind this. And Tonkonan house must face to the north because in accordance with the Toraja anthropologist that Toraja and Chester's came from the north by sailing boat. So that's why Tongkonan faced to the north to respect the Toraja and Chester's. And north symbolizes life, south symbolizes death, east symbolizes life, and west symbolizes death as well. And we then continued on the subject of death, something that would become a big part of my week in Toraja. So guys, we have come to a place called Lemo and this is where you can see the ancient Torajan graves. They are buried inside of the hills here and my tour guide Pa'aru he tells me that if you want to be buried inside of a grave like this you have to sacrifice at least 24 buffaloes. The more buffaloes you sacrifice the more it is a sign of your wealth. And we can even see here that some of the people who have passed away, they've made statues in front of their graves. And that is a sign that they were royalty. And they are very expensive to make. I had so many questions. And to my luck, Pa'aru wasn't shy at all. Because before I even started with my questions, he said, can I just talk to the camera, please? 
So, of course, I let him do that. So, the Tau Tau there, or the dead uh, statues there, they have a spirit like the dead soul. Torajan people believe that it's like a grief protector. So that's why some of the, the dead effigies, their face are not similar to the dead face because of they were made by imagination. And then most of them, they were made by the jackwood. The jackwood has yellow color. It's like gold symbolizes nobility. The cost is uh, 50 million, 20 million, depends on the size and the style of the effigies. And also all of the stone graves there, they have been made by handmade, not by machine. The interior is larger than exterior because of it can accommodate several dead people in one family. So Paru and I are just getting a small snack before we continue to our next stop. But it's so nice, there is not a lot of tourists, neither foreign or local at the moment because it's rainy season and yeah the holidays are over so I have these sites pretty much to myself. That's really nice. And Paru, my guide, he's doing a really good job. He knows so much about Toraja. So I know for sure that during this stay in Toraja, I'm going to be learning a lot from him. Paaru and I then drove 20 minutes north of Rantepau, the capital of North Toraja. And having just witnessed what a noble burial site looks like, I was now about to see a place that resembled a scene from a nightmare, providing a harsh comparison. All right, guys, so we have come to a place called Erong Lombok. And this place is not as popular as some of the many other very touristy grave sites, as you can probably tell here from the path as well. It cost 15,000 rupiah to visit this place. And I think if we're a little bit lucky, we will be the only ones there. Here we can see hundreds of the ancient coffins with the dead exkeletons, yeah? They are called Elrons. So, okay, we can go now. We can go up there. All right. I think besides biology class in primary school, I haven't actually seen human bones or skulls. Wow. This looks <laughs> scary. This is an ancient cave burial site. And it is filled with coffins, also called erongs, laying on top of each other. It is one of the oldest caves in Toraja. The coffins used to be suspended from the top of the cave, but after many years, they fell down on top of each other, making this cave a scene of disarray, with many broken coffins and human remains slowly deteriorating and becoming one with nature once again. But I noticed the coffins had various shapes and markings, so I asked Pa'aru what that meant. It's for the noble, noble people who died long time ago. In both shape, because of the Toraja and Chester's came from the north by sailing boats. And then like a pig for unmarried women, like a buffalo for unmarried men. Locals will still bring offerings to their ancestors' graves because honoring your ancestors is a big part of the Torajan culture. And therefore, Pa'ara requested me to share a message with you all. When the tourists come here, they have to be respectful. It is taboo to touch something, especially to take something from the grave. I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you very much. We then left Rantepau and went back to Makale because the weather was perfect for visiting this next very famous attraction. 
Oh, we have made it to the Jesus statue here in Toraja. I have been seeing photos of this statue ever since I started planning my trip from Sabang to Merauke. I knew that one day I would have to come here. And today, guys, is that day. I could tell that Paru's hat was getting a little bit tired, so we get him a new one. Hi! Uh, <laughs> so cool! So I cool. love Toraja. I, I love Toraja, it, yes. It looks very good on you, but very good. This view is amazing. So guys, we made it here to the Jesus statue in Tanatoraja. You've been here many times, yeah? Paru? I've been here for many times with my clients. And it's so beautiful. But this one is actually not the biggest in the world, but it's the highest one in the world. Is that correct? It is correct. But the biggest one, it is in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's how it is. I imagine a statue like this must be very expensive, yeah? Because of the local government co collaborate with the government from Makassar, the government spent trillions rupiah to build the statue, including the road access from down there. That's a lot of money. But as far as I understand, they built this because the majority of the people living in Toraja are Christians, right? That's right. And anybody can come here. So even though they are from different religion, anybody can come here as long as they respect. It's absolutely beautiful to visit this place and I can highly recommend it. We can see all of Makale from up here. We're also very lucky with the weather today, even though it's rainy season, but yeah. Thank you for bringing me up here, Paro. Thank you so much. This was definitely one of the most beautiful tourist attractions I've been to in a while. So uh, now, Paro and I are gonna go and have some lunch, some traditional food here from Makale. And then, actually, the day after tomorrow, we are going to see Rambu Solo. Rambu Solo a funeral ceremony. A traditional Torajan funeral ceremony. So, Paru will show me all the things that's gonna happen related to this famous funeral ritual. But sure. first, Makansian Nuru, yeah? Sure. Yes, <laughs> La Parasekali. And since it was a tourist attraction, there was a lot of local tourists as well. So, that means a lot of selfies. But uh, the people here from Toraja are extremely friendly and very welcoming. Salam guys. Salam guys. Nice It is a Friday and the city of Makale is buzzing. Vendors have come to the streets and here you can buy a little bit of everything. Hundreds of options for powder mix drinks and small carts have been set up to sell a variety of fried snacks. All right guys, so we went down here to Makale city again and found Pa'aru's favorite place. He said this is where you get the most famous traditional Torachan food here in Makale. And what they sell the most here is chicken and pork cooked inside of bamboo. And they didn't have the chicken, so I ordered the pork. It's chopped up very randomly, so sometimes you'll have small bits of bones. The pork taste is also very strong. It's a bit too strong for my taste. But now I've tried traditional pork here from Toraja. And yeah, it was good, but not my favorite. All right, <clears throat> time to go home and rest for a bit. This is how my day starts. Coffee first. And then I go out to check the beautiful view over the city of Makale. I still had a couple of days before the funeral ritual started. But I had a great idea of how to spend the time until then. 
Salamat pagi guys! So this morning, I've decided to make a little bit of video that is not about culture, but this time it's about adventure here in Toraja. So I have met up with the team from Tosa, Toraja One Stop Adventure. Salamat pagi guys! Pagi. We have Great, we have Denny and Jimmy. And we also have a special guest who is joining us today, and that is my subscriber here from Toraja, Ahmed. Yeah, good morning. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi, bro. Yeah. Are you ready for adventure? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> good, yeah. good, good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we're gonna get in the car now. We have around a one and a half hour drive up to a sungai namanya. My thing. My thing. Yes. So let's get the adventure started, guys. Let's go. Hey, first class. Ini banyak batu-batunya, Pak. Iya. Banyak. Banyak batu. Bahaya sekali. All right, guys. We have now made it into North Toraja. And the roads are getting a little bit more, yeah, let's just say broken. But Ahmed and Great, they're also telling me that yeah, all the roads near the cities are great, but up here in the mountains, near the villages, they are still very broken because like they say, if you cannot see them from the city, then yeah, they don't want to fix them. So, uh, but the view is great. Salama Melambi! The guys are teaching me a bit of Bahasa Toraja as well. And here, instead of saying Pa for Sir, you say Abe. Uh, Ambe. And for the women, you say Indo. Like Indonesia. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's easy to remember. Mother. Mother. Even though the drive is one and a half hour, it doesn't feel that long because it's a scenic ride with nothing but rice fields and traditional Tongkonan houses inside. All right, guys, we have made it to the river and now it is time for us to start rafting. I'm very excited. And I think Ahmad is a little bit nervous as well, but uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And the water looks great. So let's go. Are you ready, bro? Yeah, I'm ready. How do you feel? You feel good? Yeah, I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Senang sekali bisa ikut bergabung dengan Christian di sini. Saya juga, bro. It's gonna be a good day, eh? Yeah? yeah. Before starting, we're equipped with a vest, a helmet, and a paddle. But Danny then gives us a safety briefing. And I could tell that Ahmed was getting a little bit nervous, as this was his first time. The view here from our raft, it's absolutely beautiful. It reminds me when I was uh, doing rafting as well in Green Canyon in Java. And you can tell the guys here, they know what they're doing. Super skilled. So we got a good two hours of rafting like this in front of us. We saw a lot of waterfalls along the way. And Pat Denny told me that if we were careful, we could actually climb one. So that's what we did.
licin ya hati-hati My adrenaline was definitely pumping as we tried to climb higher up the slippery waterfall. I will say this, if you go on this trip, you don't want to miss this part. But make sure you wear shoes, because the rocks are sharp and extremely slippery. And the most important thing is being extra careful when you go back down again. We got back on the river, and as much fun as it was rafting, it was even more fun watching what a great time Ahmed was having. I love that. Ah, so, gimana? Sangat senang. There's quite a bit of animal life here as well. We saw plenty of bats coming out of the caves. And the river is flooded with lizards once you start looking for them. But before ending our trip, we had one more adrenaline packed thing left that I simply had to try. What better way to conclude our trip than enjoying lunch with the soothing sound of the beautiful waterfall right behind us. Alright guys, the trip here is almost over, but it's been a lot of fun and very interesting. We just saw here in the end of the trip that the locals here, they are taking sand from the river, selling it to make houses and they're selling it for 1 million rupiah for a full truckload and I asked uh, my friends here if it's if they're allowed to take the sand and they said oh Kassian you know it's they need some business they're not allowed to do it but they do it anyway because they need the money so very interesting to see we are now back at the shore here again our car is ready to pick us up and it has been such a fun trip here together with Ahmed and Tosa Toraja One Stop Adventure. I will highly recommend you try this if you come to Toraja. Guys, terima kasih banyak ya. Thank you for a good trip, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey Jimmy. Hey.
Oh. <laughs> okay, let's sail home, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so guys, today we have come to Rantepao because I thought it could be interesting to see where does all these buffaloes come from before going to the funeral rituals. So there is a place here in the middle of the city where people they come to trade, they come to buy buffaloes for the rituals or they come to sell them if they are trying to make some money. So uh, let's try and see how much these buffaloes here they cost and which ones are the most expensive. There are buffaloes in various colors, sizes and prices. So to learn more, I talked to some of the local vendors who are selling for various reasons. Boleh saya tanya Pak? Pak mau dijual ini? Ya. Ya. Kalau saya mau beli sekarang berapa harganya? 25. Kenapa mau jual sekarang? Ya, mau dipakai menikah. Oh, gitu. Ya. Ah, bulan berapa? Ya, mungkin bulan ini. Ah, itu bagus. Ya. Selamat. <laughs> but if the buffaloes have a bit of white patches on them, that's when the prices they start to increase. Jadi kalau putih di sini juga, kalau putih-putih begini itu namanya saleko. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. Jadi kalau putih di di sini di lebih sini mahal sini lagi. Ya. ya lebih mahal lagi. Kalau Jadi berapa putih. harganya ini? Ini 50 jutaan. 50 jutaan. Ya. Yeah. Lebih dari motor ya? Iya, yeah, lebih dari motor. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest one we saw costed a mere 180 million rupiah, amounting to $11,000. And as a lot of money circulates here daily, a different kind of vendor had found his way to the market as well. Control, 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 Jadi ada banyak orang di sini pikir kalau mereka minum ini bisa jadi sehat. So if you drink this together with alcohol, you will become strong or if you're sick you will become healthy. And one small crocodile penis like this is 3 juta 500. There's good money in selling stuff from a crocodile. I think Pak Ambo in uh, Kalimantan Timur he will be very sad to see this. <laughs> Saving the best for the end, we went to see the creme de la creme of buffaloes. Because if they castrate it, the value increases, as does its stomach and the length of its horns. The castrated buffalo in Toraja is called Balian, can be sacrificed for the Nobel Plus funeral. Sometimes the price for the castrated buffalo can be 200, 300 millions. Is the second most expensive buffalo of the black and white buffalo is called Saleco. I will show you the Saleco is over there. Okay. Uh, this buffalo is called Saleco in Toraja, black and white buffalo with blue eyes. But this Saleco, it is the number three of Saleco in Toraja. The not so much white, is the cost can be 380 millions. The number one, the price can be 900, even 1 billion rupiah. Both of his horns goes down to the earth, so it makes it more expensive. Valuable buffalo like this, uh, Torajan people treat it like a people or like baby. It's feed it like a baby, it's clean it like a baby, and also they are not really aggressive to people because they are treated like people. But there is one thing they do to increase the price that doesn't exactly resemble behavior towards people. So if there's one thing I don't like about this, it's the fact that this poor guy is being kept in his nose just to make his neck muscle become bigger. Because standing here looking at him, he's standing in the sun all day with his nose tied in that ring and you can tell that he's super tired of it. Ooh, sunshine, sunshine. Oh. Gotta have respect for this animal, it's big. But I can only imagine the pain of having your neck being pulled up an entire day in the sun. 
We then left the Buffalo Market to go and see another important part of the funeral preparations. All right, guys, we have now come to a small village where there is motorbikes and cars parked everywhere. This is clearly a big event going on here because before a funeral ritual, they will do buffalo fighting. Water buffaloes in an arena against each other and it will take part today for more than four hours. So this is something I've definitely never seen before. So let's go and check it out. And as far as I know, in Indonesia, gambling is illegal. But here in Toraja, they do have some special rules when it comes to buffalo fighting. They are allowed to gamble. It's interesting how, when it's related to cultural events, they always have some special rules. And I really like that, you know, because culture should be well maintained and well kept and well preserved. And if there's one thing they like at Indonesian events, it's speakers. So I'm not sure how much I'll be able to tell you guys inside because I can hear it's loud and I can see there are hundreds of people here. Wow, so I had read online how dangerous it can be to be a spectator because just as we were walking here to find a spot to watch from, the buffalo stormed right past me out into the field as it was fleeing and people are now chasing it, trying to get it back into the arena. I was about to give up on finding a spot because more than a thousand people had showed up before us. But luckily the local press helped me out. All right, so we have found a spot actually right where the press is sitting. We are sitting next to Bro... Jumar, Jumar. Jumar. So it's right in the sun though, but we do have the best view right here for the field. Hopefully the buffaloes, they won't come too close. <laughs> So many people here, it is crazy hot. They can. Excellent position. Extreme position. Um, they sell snacks here as well, which is much needed because this will go on for a lot of hours. But yeah. If you want to get close, you'll get dirty. Many had brought wads of cash to bet on their favorite buffalo with the odds 2 to 1. Two buffaloes are then let into the arena from each side, and the crowd eagerly awaits a bloody fight. I was surprised to see all ages of spectators here, and it was hot as the temperature rose to 33 degrees, feeling like 35. I won't be showing you the fighting, because I have children watching my videos, and YouTube considers this animal cruelty. And quite frankly, I will have to agree. But I can tell you this, it is brutal. Even more so watching it on video afterwards. They rip each other's skin open with their sharp horns. And the crowd goes crazy as one buffalo rips out the eye of another. The rules are that the first buffalo to flee the scene loses and you do want to make sure to keep your distance when that happens. The crowd cheers, and you can tell that they absolutely love this tradition. At least, the adults do. Because before leaving, I saw this young guy, and I couldn't help but wonder, what was he praying for? But buffalo fights aren't the only fights that are a part of the funeral rituals in Toraja. Because on our way back, we came past the village where they were doing cockfights as well. As they sit and pet them, the roosters, they look so innocent. And I was a bit confused why they were swapping them around like that. But like a boxing match, the fighters must be in the same weight class. Wow, there are people everywhere here. Hundreds and hundreds all coming here. And this is definitely a cock fight because <laughs> there's only men here. <laughs> I 
And so the gambling started. Once again, two to one odds. And the announcer gave me special permission to enter the ring, so I could understand the process. Kure semuanya. Oh, ya, kure semuanya. Oke. Okay. Pada pada. Pada pada. Oh, the roosters are then brought into the arena. And I assumed they would just be fighting using their beaks. But man has found its way to make this more barbaric. Because each rooster had been fitted with a 5 cm razor sharp blade. They are then held in front of each other to spark aggression before the fight. They are then tapped twice on the back and the fight is on. The roosters are lightning fast and feathers and blood flies through the air. This is absolutely brutal. 30 fights have been scheduled that day and even more so the following day. And tensions are high as big sums are riding on these games. And make no mistake, only one rooster leaves this ring alive. The day had finally come. One of the main reasons I had come to Toraja. It was time to attend a traditional Torajan funeral ceremony. The funeral I had been invited to was just 15 minutes from Makale. And to get there, we drove on some very small paths to get to the local village where the ceremony was being held. So, Lamar Pagi, guys. So, the day has finally come. It is time to see a Torajan funeral ritual. So, we've come to a small village here close to Makale where it's a medium-sized funeral. Around 20 buffaloes will be sacrificed and this funeral will last over three days. So uh, let's head in there and I will do my very best to document the experience for you guys. Let's go. The ceremony is called Rambu Solo. It aims to honor and deliver the soul of the deceased back to the realm of souls to rest with their ancestors. This funeral is for Nenek Tanga. Born in 1922, she passed at the age of 102 years old. She did pass away one year ago, but the Trajan people believe that she is still sick and it's during this ceremony that she will be announced officially dead. So guys, what is happening now is that we have just arrived and then it's more or less time for lunch. So I've been brought to some of the family members because before I start making a ton of video clips, I want to make sure I know who the family is. I want to thank the people here that I'm allowed to join and I want to yeah, show my respect as well. I had gifted the family 10 packs of cigarettes and we then shared the favorite Torajan dish, grilled pork and rice on a banana leaf. The mood was surprisingly light and I didn't really feel like I was at a funeral. Di mana mana tempat itu, uh, memang kita ada sedih, tapi di lain hal itu kita baku omong semua ya. Sedih itu sudah hilang. Yeah. The sound of the malambu instrument echoes through the village, and it welcomes the guests and the family of the deceased to join the dance and sing the funeral chant. Mabadon. This will help guide Nenek's soul to the afterlife. The coffin is fitted with a duba duba, a roof resembling the Tonkonan house, 
and a sarigan, a structure built to carry it. And the tempo then picks up as old Nenek is shaken and spun vigorously to help her soul overcome any obstacles. The woman carries the red long cloth called Lamba Lamba. It symbolizes the soul being brought to the afterlife. And the coffin is then paraded around the area with a speaker in front to guide them. The coffin is then being brought back and it is time to sacrifice the first buffalo. They will cut its throat with a sharp machete which drains its blood. And this may seem brutal at first, but it looks very similar to the accepted way of a halal slaughter. After the first sacrifice, Neneg is now officially stated as dead. And the Duba Duba is removed, and her coffin is instructed to be brought to the Lakian. The Lakian is a tall tower that is built to make it easier for Neneg's soul to reach heaven. Now, the master of ceremony will introduce the death life background, like the death biography, but it is spoken in Toraja high language. After all the smiles I had seen all day, you could now tell that this was a very emotional part for them. Nenek had seven kids and 28 grandkids. The ones dressed in traditional clothing. So I asked one of them, Milani, how she felt about today. Yeah, serasa nenek sudah tidak ada. Uh, dia sudah pergi dan kami tinggal kenangan saja di sini. Ya, jadi kami harus menghabiskan momen berlama-lama bersama nenek di sini sebelum nenek dikuburkan seperti itu. Jadi ya saat ini saya sangat sedih tapi harus bagaimana kita harus juga terlihat senyum karena tidak selamanya yang meninggal itu kita harus tangisi The speaker then invites the guest by family name to come to the reception building and besides the grandchildren most guests are wearing black clothing which is the norm and here guests can come to bring their presents like palm wine, cigarettes, food, etc. to show gratitude for the invitation and to give their condolences. But the gift giving is not a one-way street because more buffaloes are then being slaughtered as they will help vehicle the deceased spirit to heaven. And all the meat are then distributed to all the guests according to their social status in the community. Because a funeral like this is also about sharing and giving back to the community. So everyone goes home with something to eat. All right guys, it has been a very eventful day here in Toraja. So happy that I got to experience this and I'm amazed that they still keep these traditions and this culture. Now, most of the guests, they have gone home. I've been spending the last hour just sitting with some of the old papas and drinking some balo, the traditional alcohol here from Toraja. Super delicious, 7%, it's right from the palm tree, right out here. And it has been the best part of the day because just sitting and having time to chat with these older gentlemen 
they told me that I should get married with an Indonesian woman, preferably someone from Toraja. They also told me, stay away from girls who just want to use my money to buy bracelets and makeup. If they want to use my money to buy food for the kids, things for the house, then it's okay. They were so happy to hear how much I love life here. And I told them a lot about my journey and they really appreciate it. So all in all, it's been a really, really good day. <laughs> Over the next three days, I saw a lot of pigs and buffaloes being slaughtered. As it would feed the thousands of guests that was attending these four days total. And the longer the funeral is, shows the social standing of the family. It can take a family years to save up for a funeral like this. And Pa'aru estimated that this funeral cost would be between $30,000 and $60,000. We had a lot of good laughs and a lot of balo. Even at 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> and on the fourth and final day, it was time to say goodbye to Nenek Tanga, as she would be taken to the church and then to her final resting place. Misalnya kami datang ke Toraja, dia selalu menyambut kami dengan baik. Terus kalau misalnya dia uh, mencari sesuatu, dia biasa menuduh kami uh, untuk mengambil barangnya dan ternyata itu tidak, dia sedikit pikun. Nah itu yang kami rindukan, dia selalu berbicara banyak sekali dan telinga kami itu sangat bising sekali. Itu yang kami sangat rindukan menurut pribadi saya. And then that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. For me, it was an incredible experience and I'm just so lucky that I got to be a part of it. Definitely recommend you guys coming to Toraja. There's so much to experience here, so much to explore. The weather is fantastic, the people are kind. And safe to say, I will be coming back one day as well. Don't forget, if you want to visit Toraja, you can book your flight ticket directly on the Traveloka app. I always do this because I can buy a refund guarantee. So if I need to change my travel last minute, then I don't have to worry. I can get my money back if I have to cancel the trip. And thank you guys for watching this video. And thank you to Traveloka for sponsoring it. I will see you guys in the next video for the next adventure. Until next time, guys. <laughs>